Hey everybody, my name is Andres Salazar and you're watching The Art of Comics. Super excited about this episode. I like to dive into these behind the scenes, creative, you know, how to make comics, art, history, theory type stuff. Today, I've been wanting to do this for a couple weeks now. We're gonna talk about color theory and we're gonna talk about how color theory works and some great examples of color theory. We're going to use um, Droulet's Salambo. We're going to talk about some Roger Dean work. And we're going to also use uh, Richard Corbin. So we're going to talk some Richard Corbin Den. We're going to use some of these comics. We're going to look at art, the uh, color theory and kind of dive into why you pick certain colors, how you work them together and how it makes the art just really be more vibrant and exciting. As I'm working on my book right now, um, I'm heavily influencing it as a big homage to the 70s heavy metal, and it's got a lot of color in it. I'm going all out on the, on the uh, color wheel, so I wanna learn about this. So I've been studying this. I'm gonna share with you guys. So when you're working on your creative project, whether it be a comic or a painting or whatever, we talk color theory, right? And so it's important to learn about it. And so uh, let's just dive in. I'm just let's just dive in, turn the camera down, and let's look at some art and talk color theory, art of comics. Booyah. Okay, everybody, let's dive into color theory and uh, some comics that are very heavy into kind of their color palette and their choices. So here's a, Here's, we're gonna start off with Roger Dean. Roger Dean is very well known as the artist for Yes album covers. So if you know some of those really iconic vinyl uh, cover art, he did the cover art for those. And he was a master of design and color. And so I thought I would share a, little, a couple pages from this book, which I think is brilliant on that. I'll just, let's just start here on the cover. So some of the things we're going to talk about with color theory is the the wheel. The wheel really uh, comprises of all the the colors in the spectrum and how they relate to one another. You have your three primary colors, yellow, blue, and red. Now, when you mix each of those, it turns into what's called a secondary color. So blue and red make purple, yellow and blue make green, um, and yellow and red make orange, right? Now, as they lie along the color wheel, the opposite, the direct opposite of a primary color is a secondary. And those are considered complementary colors. So blue and green, a primary and a secondary, are complementary colors. Why is that important? Well, when you put two complementary colors next to each other, they pop out. They accentuate each other. They stand out. It becomes more vibrant and more visually appealing and interesting. So here's a great example of The View Books by Roger Dean. And here is a beautiful picture of this green, a little bit of yellows, but it's all kind of in that warm green, excuse me, cool green colors. And then boom, you have this complimentary red dragon creature with a rider, right? So this really stands out and makes this feel alive because it's on the background of the opposite or the complementary colors, the green. Now, the other thing I mentioned just now and I'll, I want to hit on is warm and cool. Cool colors are blues and greens, those recede in the background. And this is a great example of that. Warm colors, colors like red, orange, yellow, those come more towards the foreground and they pop out. So you have the cool colors recede and the warm colors come forward. That's part of your, your choices when you're doing kind of color and you're adding color to your comic or your art or whatever, right? So let's dive into it. Here's a beautiful example of that again. Now here we have this really great image of this Orenthopter type of vehicle. 
in this beautiful blue sky, okay? Now the blue is not just a monochromatic blue. There's actually different colors in here. And those would be analogous colors. Analogous colors are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So your blues, your violets, your indigos, those are all next to each other on the color wheel. So those are analogous. And what's opposite the blue? Orange. So your orange and your blue are complementary colors and it makes the blue seem bluer and the orange seem orangier, right? And the orange is a warm color, so the orange pops out and, and comes forward. The blue recedes and goes back, right? So we're gonna look at images that are using both of those. They're gonna be using the complementary color scheme and also analogous color schemes. Also, we're gonna talk about saturation and how deep or strong and intense the color is, as well as looking at some of the other colors close to each other on the wheel and how they work together, okay? So that's kind of color wheel 101 in two minutes. And let's just go through some of these images and, and check them out, and then as you're working on art, kind of see how that works, okay? Cool. Let's go, here's another one. This is great too, because you've got all these beautiful greens, and then you have this kind of a toadstool-like um, thing, and it is this kind of more reddish brown orange, right? So this is really stands out, pops out, and it makes the greens look more green, right? So just kind of really cool things. And th this is a great book. If you like his stuff and if you like this kind of fantasy uh, organic shapes, it's really brilliant. Now this one, it's almost a void of color. Here, he's really going hard on the blacks, the whites, and there is a little bit of tinge to it of a, a sepia or a little bit of yellow to it, almost like a uh, tea stain, something like that. This is another great way to use color, very sparingly. You only color a little bit of the underbelly of the serpent, that's it. And so that then stands out more because everything's desaturated. So your saturation level is important as well. So, you know, going back to that red one where it's like huge, this is full 100% red. If you were to desaturate that and make this a little bit more, um, a little less color, it wouldn't nearly be as, as powerful. Let's move over to Drulet because he's another great example of color and how he does his work. And we're gonna look at Salambo in this book that I have. Um, just looking at how he uses color. Here's a great example here, right? Here we see this, um, you know, behemoth carrier, assault carrier type of elephant guy, all in blues. The background is complementary oranges, so it works perfectly. It's it's perfectly the way you would think. And but what's a little different is that the blue, which is a cooler color, is actually in the foreground. So he's kind of reversing roles there, uh, and that's okay because of course this shows shadow. You know this shows that kind of thing. But he's going against the the kind of classic rule of foreground are warmer. He's just doing the opposite because of the, the beautiful sun right there. So, and I'm just really literally flipping this. Notice here, he's using greens and um, kind of this reddish orange to it. Here's a great example too of a figure. We're using greens and an orange. So not, not perfectly uh, complementary, right? Because he's not using red, so you can, move one over from the opposite color. So he's using actually secondary, secondary. It's not secondary, primary. So he's using two secondaries, but they're they're farther enough across the the wheel to give themselves this opposition feeling, right? And it makes them both uh, stand out more. Here's a great example of more analogous coloring. So he's using um, just the greens and blues and here, a little darker blues here in the in the for, in the foreground, but that's also a lighting choice, right? Because these are darker in the shadows, and then that is more lit, a lit area. That's another thing. Cooler things could be more in the shadows. Another great example of complementary, right? Here we have these blues, 
and um, oranges and reds. So um, he was just, look at this, this is a great example too. So strong, this red is so powerful because it's next to this really strong blue. Um, the coloring, I think, is 50% of his work. His line work is brilliant. The, the energy, the almost doodle-like kind of line work is great. But then you add, add on top of it, the coloring is really makes it pop. I mean, look at this. Something like this is just great. Um, here, we have this green that goes into a yellow, and then it kind of actually almost blends into the land of the, of the yellow sand and but notice here you've got this strong orange reddish uh, moon next to the green uh, background the green sky so it's all by choice now if you would have said if this was blue next to this green it would have been a different feeling right it wouldn't it would have a kind of a different look to it Here's another great example of these greens with reds. He's using reds, you know, opposite to the greens, just in these little moments, just in the background there, in the mouth, in this kind of laser beam, these little spots here, just to kind of like set it off. Here too, look at her. Notice she her markings are red, right? Her markings are the opposite of the, of the face. Uh, and then it actually blends into this. So really cool example. Of that I'm gonna end with probably my favorite to be honest is is Din is Richard Corbin I think Richard Corbin's color is really what sings and really is what makes this book just amazing I just love it to death and um, so here's a great example where you have you know you have this um, this mass structure here that is this organic thing in blues and greens and the background is this very strong intense orange and reds hugely strong you know complementary very vibrant and then you have actually the yellow um, so this is more analogous to these two and here he's using highlights with these little green highlights here and her body is also you have this kind of uh, green uh, key lighting green key lighting on this red background so you see that how that works again here he's lit with this green light but while but he's now key lit with, with this red right the 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 coloring is so stinking good in this stuff and it's just so strong and so vibrant now these again the background here is all greenish but the figures are a little bit more kind of purple pink so they've got a little bit more pink a little bit more red to it makes that green even stronger again very strong um complimentary here i mean th this guy was all about complimentary but then we got some parts here where okay we see he's kind of sticking to this this kind of colors and then he'll pop out these little these little weird little things and that is all analogous to and these are all from early early uh you know 17 you know uh 1977 so this is like this first run of din This is kind of interesting because now we're entering some blue. So we're putting blue and what's in the background? This kind of orange, light orange, yellowish orange. So those are really kind of complementary. And he's kind of a neutral. He's kind of this neutral color here in these panels, you know? Uh, and then they, you know, it's the alien in the background or this bug thing in the background is kind of what's, what's popping here. Great colors there again opposite from those and then he also did these great little um, vistas and just so so fun and interesting uh, and this of course is all kind of in the same palette this kind of a purple and 
and reds, but it's it's warm. But then there's some there's some warmth and and then a little shadows of coolness in there. But it feels very warm to me. I think it does because of this red here. It feels warmer than maybe it would be. Another thing, again, uh, about saturation, he amps it up. So this is like full on orange, um, which makes the makes this you know blue. You know, it makes this blue even more bluish green color to it. And he kind of flips around with the background. Notice too, it's not always the same color. He'll Depending on what he needs to do, he'll make it kind of a rosy color, an orange, a strong yellow, or whatever. So he kind of like plays around, really not worried about the background other than give, evoking that emotion. And that, you know. Um, here's another good one. They're all kind of, they have this little um, bluish, you know, fa um, I guess a key light or, or kind of a fuzz to it all. Uh, which actually makes this stand out a little bit more because this would all be almost monochromatic. It's kind of a deep purple here. Yeah, this is a great, great stuff. Um, big fan. And this was interesting too. Notice now he's using purple, a lot of strong purples, and then this lime green. And that lime green really comes out because of the purple that's, that's in this panel. So the big key messages, of course, is when you're playing with color, you're playing with saturation levels, how strong and intense is that color. Uh, and then on the wheel, you can play with uh, complementary or opposite colors, which is a primary with the opposite secondary. And you can play with ana analogous colors, which are all kind of close to each other on the wheel. And that's usually primaries and the secondaries next to each other. So those are kind of ways to kind of really think about your panels, your coloring, and that of course goes with all kind of design and everything, is looking at that kind of stuff. And so uh, that's my little spiel on color theory. I love color, I'm getting more and more into it, and uh, these guys were masters at it. And it's something to really think about when you're looking at art and appreciating it also when you're doing your own work, is how to use color and how to like really, uh, amplify it and make it work for you. So thanks a lot guys, have a great one. Hey, feel free to subscribe to the channel, be uh, aware of what else is going on with me and all that kind of stuff. I am, I post these every Tuesday and Saturday and uh, go out there and make your story. Bye.